this video we're going to talk about how do you solve an inhomogeneous system of differential equations or um, maybe another word for inhomogeneous is non-homogeneous system so here's my example solve the system here and what makes it inhomogeneous is the orange part the plus three and the minus two right they don't have my functions x or y attached to them so here's how we go about trying to solve this when I have those extra constants there over on the end. So the first thing we're going to do is rewrite this uh, in a uh, vector equation. So like the vector x prime equals some matrix A times the vector x plus the vector B. And I tried to color code it so you can see exactly how we're going to turn the system into this vector equation or this matrix equation here. So from there, what we're going to do, step two, we're just gonna forget about the orange. We're gonna forget about the B. We're gonna forget about the thing that makes this inhomogeneous. Let's just solve the kind of usual uh, system, X prime equals AX first. And so to do that, remember that we're going to just focus on that matrix, one, negative two, three, negative four. So by the way, this is called the homogeneous system, right? There is no orange piece. And so find the eigenvalues of the matrix that's uh, part of the green shading. And you should get the eigenvalues or lambda one is negative two and lambda two is negative one. Find the eigenvectors that correspond to those eigenvalues. So some good ones, maybe for negative two, I'll use two, three, and for negative one, I'll use the vector one, one. So those are the two eigenvectors for those. You could use like Wolfram Alpha to find those. Say, I'm not showing you from my work for how to get them. Then recall, once you've got both of these, uh, you can use these to form the general solution to the system in step two. In other words, to the homogeneous system. So remember the solution to the homogeneous system. To denote that it's for the homogeneous system, like without the orange blue, I'm gonna call it X sub H. So there's that little subscript of an H there. You guessed it, stands for homogeneous. But what is it? It's some constant C1 times E to the minus two T. Remember that minus two is my first eigenvalue times the corresponding eigenvector two, three, plus some constant C2 times E to the minus T where that negative corresponds to the other eigenvalue minus one. And then that times its corresponding eigenvalue one, one. So that's old news. Here's the new part. So what do we do? How do we bring the B into the equation? So what we're gonna to try to do is guess a particular solution to our inhomogeneous system. So this is one of those times where again, it's more of kind of a, a slick trick uh, that you just kind of observe what you think a good guess for the function XP might be. So what we're gonna do, you know that B, that thing that makes it non-homogeneous, it's a constant vector. I bet you that probably some constant would solve this equation. So again, in this case, your guess can kind of be modeled after just what is that inhomogeneous piece? It tells you a little bit on how to formulate a guess. It's not gonna work every time, say, but it's a good place to start. So again, since B is a constant, I'm gonna guess that a particular solution to that inhomogeneous system is just a constant vector U1, U2, or U1, U2 are just numbers, not like functions, sine and cosine, something like that. So if that's what XP is, and I'm guessing that that's the solution, the good thing about this being constant, this will make some of my work a little bit easier. When I do XP prime, you're just taking the derivative of each of the components. That would be the zero vector. So XP prime would be the zero vector. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna substitute all this information here into our inhomogeneous system. So back to the color coding. When I plug in XP into my system here, and let's put in what do I know? Well, on the left, that's the zero vector, zero, zero. That's equal to my matrix times u1, u2, plus three, negative two. And what you've got there is you've got a vector equation that is secretly just a system of two equations in the variables u1 and u2. And you could solve that for u1 and u2. Again, you could turn it into a system and do it by hand. You could use Wolfram Alpha to write this out as a matrix equation. You can do whatever you like to, to find u1 and u2. When you do, you should get u1 is eight and u2 is 11 halves. So a particular solution to this system should be just the constant vector, eight, 11 halves. Now, that's the end of step two. Step three is to put it all together. The solution to the inhomogeneous system, maybe I should be more careful, the general solution to the inhomogeneous system is the homogeneous solution plus the particular solution that you found in part B. And so if we plug those in, the general solution to our inhomogeneous system looks like, again, the yellow, which is what we found in step one, plus what we found, the particular solution that we kind of eyeballed uh, and did a little bit, of, little bit of work engineering to make sure it would work uh, in step two. Now, here is where you've got your general solution to the inhomogeneous system. If you were given in the very beginning, say, initial conditions for X and Y, you'd plug them into 
this uh, to this last expression for x. So that uh, you plug them in here to find c1 and c2. You don't want to plug them in at the beginning into the into the homogeneous one. You want to plug them in here.